everyone and welcome back to the Stitch Sessions. If you're new here, I'm Karen and I love all things to do with crochet and crafting with crochet. So welcome and if you are one of my regular subscribers, welcome back. I hope you're doing well and I hope you're looking forward to today's tutorial which is this very sweet little baby cardigan. Now many of you have really liked the um, crochet lesson that I have on how to create a round yoke and how to calculate that for a cardigan. And many of you have been asking me to actually do a full tutorial using that method to create the cardigan. So we are going to do that to create this for a baby. This is for size uh, zero to six months. And as you can tell, I made it in the same colorway to match some of the baby booties that we made in a tutorial we did a few sessions back. So this will be a nice add-on. Again, I did use the Flex Yarn by Loops and Threads. And of course, I'm going to actually use a different yarn today just so that it'll make it easier to show up on camera. So in that other tutorial, we had made these sweet little green ones. As I had said in that tutorial, I'm making this for a set of twins. So it just was perfect. I'm making two of everything. So that is what we're going to do today so that you have a matching set. If you have not seen this tutorial for the booties, the matching booties, I'll make sure to leave that link for you in the description box below. It's going to be so sweet and so fun. So um, what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about the measurements you're going to need before you get started and the materials to get you stitching up your cardigan. So let's get to it. Okay, so here are the materials we are using for this project. I'm bringing back this beautiful Lion Brand Heartland yarn. It's become one of my very favorite yarns to use, and I use these to create the matching baby booties for this cardigan. And of course, you also saw me use this yarn in the Wedge Shawl project, which is from our Shawl We Crochet series for 2022 and if you're curious about our crochet series I will leave a link for the playlist to it in the description box down below we're doing all shawls this year and all different shapes so tons of fun so I have tons of this yarn left over which is perfect because I'm going to make the matching cardigan to our booties so in case you're wondering this is called Channel Islands it's a really pretty um, I would say it's kind of close to a sagey green very very lovely and again nice and soft so for this type of cardigan, I would say, oh, if you had 100 grams, you would be more than enough for a cardigan and uh, a pair of booties, okay? You definitely want to make sure that you have a measuring tape on hand to figure out the sizing that you're going to make. And the hook size that I'm going to be using with this yarn is a 6 millimeter hook, which is also known as a J or a size 10. I do believe that this yarn calls for a five millimeter hook but again I want this cardigan to sit nice and relaxed and very cushy so I always like to go up a slightly a hook size and as always make sure that you have a pair of scissors <laughs> to snip off your yarn and a handy yarn needle to sew in any ends at the end and if you would like, you may want to also have a button to sew onto your cardigan. So I haven't put mine on yet, just yet there, but usually for baby cardigans, they kind of get just put at the top there, okay? And another thing you are going to want to have is a pad of paper and a pen, and you may want to download a sizing chart. And now you can find this on our Crochet Crafty website, and of course I'm going to leave a link for that in the description box down below. And so we have it here from three months to all the way up to 18 months. And I'm not sure why it says toddler there, but I think that's a typo, so we'll have to fix that. So let us begin. Okay, so before we talk about the exact sizing and the chart, just a little something to keep in mind. And this is a frustration I've heard from a few moms uh, in the past, and that is gift giving for the newborn baby. So for example, these twins that I'm making these items for, they're going to be born at the end of August. So right away, people automatically think, okay, August, summer baby, I should make something for like zero to three months old. 
The thing is with babies, especially newborns, they grow quickly. And so if you're doing a particular item like a cardigan, so that's the thing you wanna keep in mind. So I'm gonna do a cardigan. I would say that in the summer months, a baby is not gonna be wearing a cardigan. And in fact, usually from zero to three months, sometimes even up to six months, they're spending a lot more time in their jumpers, right? And so I'm thinking they're born in August, they're probably gonna wear cardigans in the mid to late fall. So at that point, they're probably gonna be around three months and into the winter. So I that's why I have decided to make my size for closer to six months. And sometimes I would even say, start right away and make it for 18 months. Remember, babies grow so quickly around that period of time. And you want to get, you want the mom especially to get good use out of the item. So if you're making it for a newborn size, you might be lucky if they wear it once. So if you really want to kind of think practically about it and the use that the child is going to get, I would always say plan ahead. So that's something to keep in mind. So with my sizing, because I am making this more for a six month old, I have taken down my pertinent measurements here. So the measurements you're going to need is the neck circumference. So remember that's the measurement all the way around the neck. Now in this measurement chart, I realize that it, it says neck width. And if you go across to six months old, they're saying the neck width is three inches, three and a quarter inches or 8.5 centimeters. So if you double that, that's going to be approximately six and a half inches. And then I would add another few inches on the side, right? So if you just double it, that's just basically think of it like the, the front of the neck and the back of the neck. And then I always add a few extra inches on the side for what we call ease. And ease is kind of like the comfort of the garment being able to come on and off the person. So for my neck circumference, I have 12 inches or 30 centimeters, okay? You're also gonna need the chest measurement, which is the measurement that goes right across kind of the widest part there of the child. So for me, my chest measurement is 17 inches or 43 centimeters. So for those of you that are following along with me, kind of doing a similar size, this will be perfect. You're also gonna need the armhole depth, the back to waist measurement, the sleeve length, and maybe the wrist, that's kind of an add-on. The armhole depth is usually measured from the neck to the underarm area. So it's usually on that slant there. And that measurement is important because you're gonna keep creating your yoke until you get that initial armhole depth measurement, okay? And then the back to waist measurement is basically from the neck down to the waist. So that will determine the length of your cardigan that you'd like to have, okay? So for example, for me, my armhole depth is three and a half inches or nine centimeters. My back to waist is seven inches or 17.5 centimeters. Then you have your sleeve length, which is the length from under the arm all the way to the wrist and I have six and a half inches or 6.5 centimeters. And I did look up the wrist measurement, which I should add on this chart here. And on average, a six month old, this is the circumference of the wrist, is gonna be about five and a half inches or 14 centimeters. Now, a lot of the times for babies, we just don't even worry about the wrist measurement. You just kind of keep the width of the armhole as is, okay? So the length of the sleeve, is gonna start from under the arm all the way to the wrist there, okay? And so that's the first thing you wanna do. If you are able to have your that child on hand, that's great, take the measurements because then you can be more true to the child. Again, remember that sizing charts do vary a little bit. You know, not all babies are created exactly in the same measurements, just like all um, adults don't have the exact same measurements, but this is on average, pretty much the measurements are gonna take you through what you need to do. So first thing, take your measurements and that's why you need your handy uh, measuring tape. Once you have your measurements, 
Now you're going to be ready to begin actually stitching up your cardigan. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is place a slip knot on our hook. Oops. And then I'm going to chain 48. Now I'm chaining 48 because I know that 48 is going to give me a length of 12 inches. So remember, my neck circumference is 12 inches. So that's the first thing I want to start with. So I'm just going to chain up 48. Okay, so once you have your 48 stitches, you've got something like that, nice and consistent. Okay, and then what I like to do, once I have my 48 stitches or 48 chains, I like to just kind of take a measuring tape and just confirm that that is still the right length. Now, I just leave it here. I do not stretch it because it does tend to shrink a little bit. So I don't want to stretch it to 12 inches. So just get my measuring tape here and there is my 12 inches right about there. So 48 stitches. And But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add an additional two, and I'm going to tell you why. We generally, when we're doing things in a round yoke project, the number 10 is very magical. Now, some people will use the number 12, and I discussed this in the round yoke lesson, but I have found that the number 10 works, for me, always works every time. So we want our chains to be divisible by 10. Now, if you had something like 45, um, you'd have a few stitches left over. It's not the end of the world, but because I have 48 and I'm just a couple of stitches away from 50, I'm just going to chain an additional two. Okay. And so I have 50 stitches and that's going to give me a nice, easy, divisible number by 10. And so now we're going to begin row number one. So for row number one, we actually want to chain one more. And now what we're going to do is we're going to find the second chain from your hook, which is right here. Remember, the loop on the hook never counts as one. And I'm going to place a single crochet into that chain. But what I'm going to do a little differently is instead of going in through the front, I'm just going to turn my chain length over. And you can see these little back bumps there. I'm going to go into the back bump. And what this is going to do, it's going to give me a nice little finished edge along the top. And I would use this technique, especially if you're not going to do too much of um, a border or a trim around uh, the top of your collar, okay? And uh, now I do do an additional row after this, but I still like the nice finish line it gives me. So I have one, two, and I'm going to turn it to the back. Right there, you can see that bump poking out there. You're just going to insert your hook into there. You're going to have to help it along a little bit. And you're just going to place a single crochet into that, just like that. And that's what you're going to do all the way down your chain. So here's my next bump. I'm going to insert the hook and then single crochet. So back bump and single crochet. Okay, so you can see now the, the integrity of the bottom edge or, or what will be the top edge stays nice and even. So go ahead and do that all the way to the end and you should now have 50 stitches in total. So I'll meet up with you when you have finished row number one. Okay, so I now have 50 stitches. My work looks something like this. It's pretty uniform. And now we're going to begin to create the roundness or the round shape to our yoke. So remember, we want to keep that number 10 in mind. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and turn our work. And the stitch I'm going to be using for this cardigan is the herringbone half double crochet stitch. So what we're going to do is you're going to yarn over, you're going to go right back into that very first stitch. So the chain one is not going to count as anything. We're going to insert our hook, pull up a loop through the stitch, and then continue to pull it through that first loop, just like that. Okay, you've got two loops on the hook. Now you're going to yarn over and pull through both of them. And that is our 
herringbone half double crochet stitch. So we're going to do that again into the next stitch, yarn over, insert, pull through and through that first loop, and then yarn over and pull through two. So I'm going to do that three more times, and then we are going to do our first increase stitch. So this is fourth stitch. So I'm sorry. So we've done one, two, three, four. So into the fifth stitch, we're going to do an increase. So because we have 50, we divide it by 10, that gives us five. So that means into every fifth stitch, we are gonna place an increase. And that means we're gonna place two stitches into one. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook, pull up a loop and pull through the first loop there. So that's the first stitch. And now I'm gonna go back into the very same stitch and I'm gonna do another one. And that is what we call an increase, okay? And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place one herringbone half double crochet stitch into the next four stitches. And then into the fifth, I'm going to do an increase. And you're gonna repeat this pattern all the way to the end of row number two. So go ahead and do that, and I will meet you at the end of this row to begin row number three. Okay, so I've finished row number two, and now you can see my work is starting to curve, and that's exactly what we want to have happen. So at the end of row number two, I now have 60 stitches. I just wanna show you guys a little something though. As I came close to the end of my row, I had four stitches and then I was gonna do an increase in the very last stitch. And just a general rule, you wanna try and not have your increase at the edges. So if you have like, I ended up having the perfect number and my increase was gonna be in the last stitch, I actually just did it in the stitch before the last one and then this is a regular stitch. It's just, if you leave it to the end, it starts to actually flare out more than we want it to at the end. So this is the opening of our neckline for our cardigan there, okay? So I had done an increase here, and then I had one, two, three, four. Into the fourth stitch, I did the increase, and then I just did the extra stitch here, okay? So just in case you have that happen, if you're following along exactly with me, you just always wanna make sure you just leave your increase just before the end. Okay, let's go on to row number three. And row number three is not going to be an increase row. So I like to alternate my increases just so that you get a nice, really smooth rounded shape. You can already see it's getting kind of these little corners coming out. We wanna smooth that out. So every other row I'm going to not increase. So for row number three, you're just gonna chain one turn your work, and then you're going to continue doing one herringbone half double crochet stitch into each stitch. That is a mouthful. <laughs> so we're gonna yarn over and right back into the very first stitch, we'll insert our hook and just place a herringbone stitch like before. No increases, just one into each stitch, okay? At the end of row three, you should still have 60 stitches. So at the end of row two, I ended up having 60 stitches, so we're increasing by 10. And at the end of row three, I will have 60 as well. Okay, row three is now complete, and I still have 60 stitches, so you can really see the rounded shape is taking form now. So this is going to be the opening of our cardigan. Eventually you will fold this down and it will have a little opening like that. So let's move on now to row number four where we return to increasing. And after this row you kind of start to see a little bit of a, a system of how you would continue creating subsequent rows. So we're going to chain one and turn our work. And for row number four, we are now gonna place an increase into every sixth stitch. So in the previous uh, increase, 
row we did it in every fifth stitch we're now going to do it into every sixth stitch so the very first stitch we're going to place a herringbone stitch there so that means we're going to do five stitches and then into the sixth we are going to place our increase so we have One, two, three, four. Okay, we have, this is the fifth one. And now into the sixth one, we're gonna place our increase, which is two herringbone stitches. And right back into that same stitch, we'll place two. Okay, just like that. So this is the repeat for row number four. You're gonna continue doing that all the way to the end. So you're gonna place one stitch into the next five stitches and into the sixth, you'll place your increase. And you're gonna keep repeating that and then I will meet you at the end. Okay, so I have completed row number four and now you can really see that nice round yoke happening there. I now have 70 stitches at the end of row four. We're now gonna go on to row five, and this is a non-increase row, so you already know what to do here. You will chain one, turn your work, and you're simply just gonna continue placing a herringbone stitch into each stitch all the way across. So every time you get to an odd-numbered row, there will be no increases. So now the pattern is pretty straightforward. Your even rows you're going to increase your odd numbered rows, you're not going to increase. So this is row number five now and it will still have 70 stitches. So I continued repeating this in this fashion until I hit row number nine. So at the end of row five, you're gonna have 70 stitches. In row six, you're going to, it'll be an increased row. So then you're going to increase into every seventh stitch and then row number seven will be a non-increase row. So, sorry, at the end of row six, you will have 80 stitches. At the end of row seven, you will still have 80 stitches because we will not have increased. Row number eight will have an increase into every eighth stitch, and then you will have 90 stitches in total. And then lastly, we're gonna do row number nine with no increases, and then you will still have 90 stitches. So I'm just gonna leave you to do that, and then I will meet back up with you once I've completed nine rows. And then we can talk about how we're gonna fold it down and then begin to create our armholes. So see that? So that's your neck opening, and this will be where we open and close our cardigan. Love that. Okay, guys, pause the video, and I'll see you back here in a little bit. Okay, guys, so I have completed my yoke. Now, I actually ended up doing 11 rows. So how you know when it's time to stop is you go by your armhole depth. So my armhole depth should be three and a half inches. But when I stopped at the ninth row, it was really only three inches. And that will happen because even though this is a medium four weight and this cardigan here is also a medium four weight, this is just slightly um, a looser spun yarn. So it sits actually a little bit uh, thinner and sometimes it's just your gauge at the time you're making things. So I ended up doing 11 rows. So, so that's why it's important to understand the principles of creating the yoke in a cardigan pattern. So I've got that. So what we're doing is we're just folding it now in half. So you can see this is our opening. And then I just take a little measurement here. So I take my, and there you have it. It's three and a half, right? And it should be the same no, no matter where you place your measuring tape. So three and a half. So that's good for me. And that is our round yoke. And now the next thing we're gonna do is in the next row, we're actually gonna create the openings for our sleeves. So we need to just go back to this little diagram here of our yoke. And this is the reason why the number 10 is so important. So the first thing we wanna know 
is that at the end of my 11th row, I now have 100 stitches. Okay, so that's really important. Okay, and now this is my yoke. So I've got my little opening here. And so when we have it folded down in half like this, whoops, okay, this is the shoulder area on each side. You've got the front side and you've got the back side. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to kind of review that shape. So we've got our shoulders right there. Okay, and then we've got our seam to fold our shoulders, uh, our shoulders <laughs> actually over the shoulder. So that's going to give us some ease there over the shoulder. Okay, then we have the back of our cardigan, which also gets split into three sections one, two, and three. And then, of course, we've got two sections on the front because we've got an opening here. So these are our shoulders here. Okay, shoulders. Okay, so we remember our diagram about our yoke. Now let's come back to this 100 stitches. What we wanna do is we want to divide that 100 by 10. Remember that magical number 10? And that's gonna give us 10. Okay, so why are we dividing by 10? Because remember, in the lesson, we talk about how the yoke has 10 sections, which I just explained here. So we have our back, which is split into three. Our front, which if this wasn't a cardigan, would also be split into three, because it should be the same on the back as it is on the front. But of course, we've got the opening here. And then we've got two sections on each shoulder. So we've got one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so usually there's three here. So we've got ten sections. So we know each section has to have ten stitches. Okay, that's why this actually worked out quite nicely, with a nice even number. So with this number ten in mind, we now know that the back, because there's three sections in the back, is going to get 30 stitches. So this is important to take note. Each side is going to get 20 stitches. Remember there's two sections for each shoulder. So each shoulder is gonna get 20 stitches and 20 stitches. Now we know that the back is equal to the front and there's 30 stitches in total. So, but we have two sections here. So that 30, we're going to divide by 2, which is 15. So that means the front panel gets 15, and this front panel gets 15. Okay? Sorry, my chicken scratch there. And so if you add all these numbers up, they're going to add up to 100 stitches. Okay? So once we get our numbers down, now we're going to actually what I would recommend is get a couple of stitch markers or safety pins or bobby pins, something to mark your yoke. And we're going to mark our sections so that when we start around number 12, we'll know exactly where to go. Okay, so I've got some markers here. Now I'm just referring back to my diagram here. So we've got our opening, so we're going to start from here, work our way back. So this first panel we know has to have 15 stitches. So we're going to count 15 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So I'm going to put a stitch marker into the 15th stitch. Okay. And now we are going to go on to our first shoulder. And we know we have 20 stitches. So we're going to count 20 stitches for our shoulder. So from here, we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So I count the 20 stitches, but I'm actually going to put the stitch marker in the next one. And the reason being is because our this number of stitches for our shoulder 
are the number of stitches we actually are going to skip. So these markers will represent the stitches that will get worked into. Okay, so now if I fold my yoke, I've got this marker and this marker. That is where my first armhole is going to be. See that? Okay, and then I've got my front panel there. So now I have to go across the back. So remember, across the back, we're going to go all the way until we hit the next shoulder, so that means we have 30 stitches. So we're now going to count 30 stitches, including this one here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 and 30 and into the 30th stitch we will place a stitch marker. Okay now we're into our next shoulder and we know it's 20 stitches. We're going to skip 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 and into the next stitch, we'll place a stitch marker. And in the remaining stitches, we should have 15 stitches left. So beginning from here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So it worked out perfectly. Now, it happens. You may get to the end and go, uh-oh, I only have 14. Or, man, I have 16. I have one stitch too many. Don't worry about it. One stitch is not a big deal, or even two stitches, okay? So now I've got all of my sections marked, and now the rest is super easy. So when I fold this down, okay, we can see that our, see, our armhole is there. And then our other armhole is here, and we've got the opening. So now we pick up our hook. Okay. And now all we're going to do, you'll chain one and go right into that very first stitch. So you're getting to know the herringbone stitch very well at this point. And you will stitch one herringbone stitch into these first 15 stitches right up to the stitch marker. Okay, so I'm at the stitch marker. I'm just going to take that out. I'm going to work into that stitch. Okay, so I've got my first 15 stitches, and now I am going to skip these next. 20 stitches. I'm going to find that stitch marker. See how that's going to fold perfectly there? So, and I'm just going to keep that marker in just to make sure I hit that stitch. So I'm just going to yarn over. I've skipped all of these stitches and I'm going to go into this one and I'm going to do my next herringbone crochet, half double crochet stitch into that one, just like that. Now, if I want to, I can take out the marker. And now I've created, I've officially created that armhole, okay? Sometimes some people like to do a chain one here just to give a little bit of ease. It's totally up to you. I'm pretty happy with the width of that um, sleeve. So now I'm just gonna continue on. And I think you get the gist here. You're just gonna stitch one into every stitch. Okay? All because now we're going across the back, so that's 30 stitches, and you're going to go until you hit the next marker. Insert even into that. So I'm going to go all the way until I get to the next marker here. Okay, and I've come up to the next marker. Just going to take that out into the next stitch. Okay, so that's now 30 stitches going across the back. Now I'm going to skip all of these stitches here and go into the very next stitch marker. 
and that will form my second armhole. Oops. So I'm going to yarn over. It's going to feel strange if this is new to you to leave all those out there, but it'll make sense. Insert. There we go. Now I can take that out. I just like to make sure I don't miss it. Okay, and now I'm just going to place one stitch into each of the remaining stitches. Okay, so I've completed row number 12. And now you can actually see the body just starting to take shape here. Now the rest is, you're going to just coast through this now. So the tricky part is working out the math to create the oak and then the armholes. So you can see now you've got the armholes formed. And now you're just going to do one stitch into every stitch all the way around back and forth, back and forth to now create the length of your cardigan. So remember that measurement we took, which was the back to waist measurement. So, so that's the measurement we want to focus on now, and that's what's going to give us the length. So that, for me, that's seven inches, and that means from the top of the neck all the way to the edge of my cardigan. So I'm going to just measure that there. So I'm going to keep doing rows until I get to approximately seven inches inches okay now if you go to seven and a half or eight maybe you want yours to sit a little bit longer totally up to you probably don't want to do it too long on a baby because they just start to end up swimming in it right so you just want it to sit nicely so I'm going to go to seven inches now when I had done this cardigan I now continued up until row 20 so remember I just finished row 12 so I've added two extra rows in this cardigan and, you know, I also explained in the booty tutorial how you can make two of something and they're never going to be perfectly the same. Like I can even tell this one is already looking just a bit, just slightly larger than this one. And again, it's just the way this yarn is spun. It sits a little bit tighter, even though I used the same hook and it is a medium four. So something tells me I am going to take mine to row 22. I went only to row 20 in the previous one. So you're just going to go until you get your back to waist measurement. So you chain one, go around, chain one, turn your work, etc., etc. You know the drill. This part's super easy now. So this will take you a little bit, not too long, but you're going to want to pause that video and uh, maybe put on a podcast or something and whip up the next few rows. And then basically the body of our cardigan will be complete and then we can move on to our sleeves. So I'm gonna finish mine and then I'm gonna meet you back here shortly. Okay, so I've completed my body and this is how it looks so far. And so now you can see that the armholes are coming out nicely and I've got my length. Now, so let's just have a look here. So my neck or back to waist measurement start up here and I go right down here and it gives me seven inches perfectly which for me is exactly what I needed but funny fact is I ended up doing 23 rows okay so uh, meaning from the top all the way to the bottom I have 23 rows now when I take this little guy that I've created first I also have seven inches here okay but I actually only used 20 rows so again this goes back to that topic about the yarn weights and what difference it makes but at the end of the day it's not a huge deal but I just want to kind of cut off any panic at the pass for those of you that are a little newer if you're making a few of these and you go oh what did I do wrong because it's you know it's taking me more rows to accomplish the same thing that is totally normal so do not worry about it the fun thing is we're just about ready to finish off the whole body portion and then we're going to go on to our sleeves so all we're going to do now is we're just going to so you can see I did not sit my arm we're just going to continue creating a really simple little trim all the way around the neck and then down the collar there okay and that just gives it a nice finished look 
okay, as opposed to having a raw edge here. Now, there's actually nothing wrong with the raw edge. It makes it, gives it a little bit of extra shape, but especially if you want to make several buttonholes, you're definitely going to want to create a nice finished edge. Now, I'm not doing buttonholes because I'm just adding one little button up at the top here, which I'll do at the very end. So all we're going to do is we're going to place one half double crochet into the side of each row going up the way here. Now we are working with half double crochet stitches, so it's not as straightforward as um, as if we were dealing with single crochets or double crochets for that example. So half double crochets, sometimes one into the side of each is fine, but because the size or the height of a half double crochet is somewhere between a double and a single crochet, sometimes you may have to put two to it into the side of one stitch. So it's definitely going to have to be something you're going to gauge by your visuals and what you are happy with. So as long as the work lays flat, what you don't want is you don't want it to buckle or bunch. Okay. So I just finished my last stitch here and I'm just going to round the corner here. So I'm going to place two more half double crochets into that same stitch. Whoops. And that's going to allow me, see how it's already starting to bend around. I'm going to put one more in there. And that's, that's usually the general rule is to place three stitches into one to create a little corner. See that? Now we're right around the bend. Now we're going to work up the side. So see these are the sides of stitches. So I'm just going to kind of go in where I think visually it will work. And try not to go into the gaps. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but I find if you go into the gaps here, these were the chain ones, then it actually creates more attention to that gap. And I want it to kind of sit in there. So I always try and go in through the loops and oops, and just try and keep it nice and cozy. So then I just sit and look at it. Yep, I'm pretty happy with that. It sits nice and flush. And then I'm going to go into the next section. So maybe I'm going to go into this one here, which may be too close, but let's see what's going to happen here. Okay, so that is probably going to sit too close there. So maybe the next one, I'm going to go out here. And so this is what you're going to do all the way up to just give your collar or your collar trim a nice, there we go. See, as long as it still stays fairly straight, you're on the right track. If this starts to bow out a lot, then you know you've got too many stitches in close proximity to each other. So that's it, that's all. You're gonna do that all the way up. When you get to here, you wanna place three stitches at the end. So remember, you're gonna come around the corner. And then I'm gonna meet up with you here because I did do a few little decreases around the neckline just to kind of bring it in a little bit more, okay? So go ahead and do that and I will see you back here shortly. Okay guys, so I've done my trim all the way up there, all the way up to my collar here. So I'm pretty happy with how it looks. So see the difference between the raw edge and the finished edge? Nice like that. So it is gonna curve a little bit because remember our round yoke naturally flares a wee bit. And so generally when we put the little button on, it's gonna have a slight flare. That is totally normal, totally A-OK. -okay. Now, just to go around the top, I do want to just cinch this in just a little bit, snuggle it in closer to the neckline. So you can see I've done my three stitches in one. And now I'm going to go along the top here. And I'm going to decrease into every fifth stitch right now. So I'm going to count. So I'm going to go into the next stitch. I'm going to do a regular. So this would have been our... Um, foundation chain row that's here, right? So we have one, and then we have two, and three, so it can be a little tighter here. Just take your time. 
Here's the fourth one. And now we're going to decrease the, the next two, the fifth and the sixth. So we're going to insert our hook. Pull up a loop. And then I just like to go directly into the next stitch. Some people like to yarn over again, but I just don't worry about it. I'm going to pull up, whoops. I'm going to pull up that loop, so four loops. Yarn over, pull through all four of them. Oops, I did that wrong. So we're going to yarn over and insert our hook. Pull that loop and pull it through. Now we're not going to resolve it. You're going to yarn over, go into the next one, pull through, slip through. So these are two herringbone stitches are unresolved. Yarn over and pull through all three. And you've just done a decrease. Now, I think sometimes what I do is I kind of go back and forth between just doing a regular half double crochet decrease and a herringbone decrease. It's not the end of the world. If I remember it, that's how I do it. If I don't, oh well. The important thing is that it is decreased and that the height of the stitch remains the same. Okay, so moving on, we do it again. We do one, two, three, four, and then we decrease five and six. And you're going to continue that all the way around until you get to the end. So what that helps you do, like I said, is for me, this is kind of a really wide neckline, so it just kind of helps shrink it in a little bit. And then once you've done your decreases, you're just going to continue down the other side, doing the final collar trim there, and then you're going to slip stitch to join and snip your yarn. And the body work is done. And the last thing we have to do are our sleeves. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is refer back to our list of measurements and we have our sleeve length. So for me, I need six and a half inches or 16.5 centimeters. So when I measured my first one here, so the sleeve length, I'm gonna take it right from the top all the way there. So I made mine seven inches. I always like to have a little extra because sometimes you might want to just fold it over to create a cuff if you like. And I always feel like it's it's better to have a little bit more in length than not enough. So that is what we're going to do for our sleeve. That's the measurement we're going to use. Okay, so for this, let me bring this guy back here. So for this one, I had a total of 10 rows from the yoke to create the rest of the sleeve. And at round seven, I did a decrease in that round. See how it just slightly tapers in? So that is what we're gonna do. So it's pretty straightforward. We know that we skipped 20 stitches here. So our sleeve circumference should be 20 stitches for the first six rows or rounds, I should say. So what you want to do is make sure you've got the right side facing out and I'm going to take our yarn. Now you can place a slip knot on your hook, but a lot of times when I'm doing things like joins, I like to just place my hook right away into the garment and then pull the yarn through. So I'll show you what I mean. So this is the right side is facing out and I like to always start right in the crease of the underarm or just behind it. So I'm going to insert my hook right there and then I'm just gonna hook the yarn on the hook <laughs> and then pull it through like that I like to throw the tail over and then I'm just gonna chain one okay and that secures it right there and then I'm gonna work over that tail where is it so now we're working in rounds and so I'm just going to yarn over and right back into that same stitch, I'm going to place a herringbone half double crochet stitch. Just like that. And that is what I'm going to do all the way around. Pretty straightforward, you see? So that's why I want you guys to almost use this as like a base template for creating 
round yolk cardigans and then you can always kind of add your own twist to it if you like. Okay, just working over that tail. So that's what you're gonna do all the way around. And when you come to the end, you're just gonna slip stitch to join your round and I'll meet you there just to kind of take you through the next round. Okay, so I'm coming up around the end here and now I'm going to slip stitch to join into the stitch I started off with. Now, a little something that might happen, which does happen to me every once in a while, and it happened here. You know that you skipped 20 stitches, so essentially you should have 20 stitches altogether. I ended up having 22 at the moment, and that's because, you know, you're gonna have this little gap created here from one side to the other. So I started a little bit inward, and so I had my 20, and then I had 21, 22, right? So then I had a little gap here. It's not the end of the world, right? So in case you're following along and you're going, oh geez, I got more stitches, or I, I've got less, it doesn't usually happen that you have less stitches, but more often than not, people say, oh, I'm supposed to have 20 and I have 21, or I have 22. That happens, it's normal, because there's always a little extra gap here under the arm and you want to fill that. Like I could have just skipped over. See how there's actually technically still looks like a little bit of a gap there, but with subsequent rows, it will close up. Um, you could just skip over it, but then you're gonna have this huge hole there. So you definitely wanna close that gap and uh, yeah, it's not the end of the world. So here we go. So that's round one. And then all you're gonna do just as you continue is you'll always slip stitch to join and then you chain one and you begin again. Now, because I always like that seam under the arm to sit fairly consistently, every other row, so the first row I went right back into the stitch that I chained out of, every even row I don't. I go into the next one to begin. And those of you that saw the booty project, you'll know that I use this same technique, right? So I'm just kind of ignoring that chain one. When I come back around, I then will go back into that stitch and that kind of creates a nice even seam, okay? So that's all you're gonna do and then you continue on. So we are working in rounds now. So this is now round number two for me and you're gonna continue on to round three, four, five, and six. And at the beginning of round seven, I'm gonna meet up with you and we're just gonna talk about doing a very subtle little decrease. Okay, so I've just completed six rounds, so you can see my work is looking like that. You will see that the texture of the sleeve will look slightly different than the rest of the sweater, and that's because we are working in the round, so we're not turning our work, right? So when we were working on the flat side, I call it, we go one row, we turn, we come back the other way, so it has a certain texture. And because this one we kept basically facing right side out, it has a slightly different texture. Now, you could have kept it a little bit more uniform by instead of slip stitching to join and just continuing, you can slip stitch to join, turn your work, and then you would have kept the same kind of texture. And sometimes I do do that. This time around, I just didn't feel like it was necessary. And it does create a very subtle change, and I like it. So there you go. Okay, so we're going on to row or round number seven, and this is where I did one decrease just to make it very subtle, just give it a little subtle um, tapered look. So we're going to chain one, and we just want to kind of basically decrease in every corner, so to speak. So we want one on here, one on here, and then one on each side of the middle, okay? So we're going to decrease into every fifth stitch. So I'm gonna start off right away. And I'm gonna decrease right away. So I have the first one. And then I'm gonna go into the next one. And I'm just gonna decrease there, okay? And now I'm gonna do four regular stitches or regular herringbone stitches, one. two, three, and four. And now the next, the fifth and the sixth one, I'm gonna stitch them together. So you have one and you have two, just like that. 
okay? And that's what you're gonna repeat all the way around. You're gonna do the next four regulars, five and six together, next four, five and six together. And that should bring you back to the end of your round seven. And then for rounds eight, nine, and 10, you're just gonna go back to doing one into each stitch. So this, if you had 20 stitches, this should bring you down to 16 stitches. So I had 22, so it's gonna bring me down to about 18 stitches, okay? And so at the end of round 10, just make sure that you take out your measuring tape and you just go, okay, did I reach my seven inches? Or if you um, were just short and maybe you're like, mm, I kind of want to add a few more, then add a few more uh, rounds, okay? So do that. And then what you want to do is you're going to snip off your yarn and then you're going the other side and create the other sleeve the exact same way. Now, one little thing that I did here is in the very last round, I don't know if you can see that with this yarn. See how there's a little bit of a ridge? Just in the very last round, I worked the stitches into the back loops only. Again, subtle textures or subtle accents, but it was something um, that I kind of thought was neat, and if you want to do it, you can. All right, so you now have all the tools to finish your sleeve, do the next sleeve, and then we'll have our final reveal. And here we are, the finished cardigan. I finished the last of my sleeves and I just added a sweet little button there. And this is now ready to be gifted. So again, uh, here are the matching booties. So you have a complete outfit and it goes great with its companion cardigan here and matching booties there. So the twins are ready to go. I'm very happy with how this turned out and I hope you found it pretty easy, fairly straightforward. We were just using the herringbone stitch. So if you do have any questions, remember, drop them for me in the comment box down below or you can always email me directly, of course, at info at crochetcrafty.com. You know, I'm always ready and very excited to help you guys with any questions you may have. Now, if you like this type of content, make sure to give me a thumbs up. I haven't done too much baby stuff in the past. Like I've done mostly the odd baby blanket here and there. Um, so let me know if you're liking some of this baby crochet uh, projects and items. I'll be happy to make more. So I hope you enjoy making your cardigan and hopefully it's also helped demystify the round yoke uh, technique for any size actually, whether you're doing it for a baby or an adult you can follow the same method. So in the meantime, guys, I hope you have an amazing day. Happy crocheting. Take good care of yourselves as always, and I will see you in the next session. Oh, and by the way, make sure to hit me up on one of the socials. I'm on Facebook and Instagram at The Stitch Sessions. I know a lot of times you guys have made some of my designs and I'm always curious to see what colorways you guys have decided to go with for your project. So make sure to come over and say hello to me there. All right, guys, and that's all for today. I look forward to seeing you guys in next week's session. Take care.